Okay. I'll call the order. Yes, ma'am. Yep. For the school board meeting, March uh, 17th, 2022, at 5.30 in the central building, second floor conference room. And I'd like to have everybody um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, we would like to recognize our visitors, and we have two people that will be coming up, um, Wade Bishop and Matt Potter, and if you'd like to come up, you can come up to the podium. Madam Vice Chair, should we approve our agenda prior first? Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, sorry. Yes. I skipped right over there. <laughs> yeah. One moment. <laughs> can I get an approval? Um, can I get a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this passed unanimously. All right, now we'll have a recognition of our visitors. Sorry about that. And we appreciate you guys coming in today. Um, we, I got, Julie shared with me the email that um, had been sent out. So I'll let you go ahead and okay. speak. Well, first of all, good evening, and uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to all the Irishmen and the Irish want to be on the day. Uh, we want to thank the school board for giving us the opportunity to speak at this public uh, comment period. And I'm assuming that you all got to read that letter that was sent. I think it was just um, Julie and you and I had that head. I don't know that the whole board has seen it yet. I don't okay. think everybody has. Well, again, I'm going to read that, okay? Yep. Okay. This is the letter I sent to your chair. I'm writing you this letter on behalf of other grandparents, parents, fans, and participants of the 2020 Wasika girls basketball team and requesting the Wasika school board consider recognizing this incredible effort by these Wasika Blue Jay student athletes. The Wasika girls basketball team is ranked most of the year in the state and we're somewhat expected to make an extra run for the birth in the state tournament. But a year ending injury to one of their starters with seven games left in the regular season, and a lot of the basketball gurus and or fans thinking that now the team would never make it to the state tournament. But what the gurus and fans didn't know about this team was the amount of heart, determination, work ethic, and desire these girls of the Wasika basketball team and their outstanding coaching staff had. None of them are going to give up on the team goal, which was to make it to the state tournament. So Coach Joan Conway and her excellent coaching staff and the players had to make some adjustments over the remaining seven regular season games, and they did. They had overcome the setback and went on to win the section championship. They had achieved their team goal. They had won five playoff games, including the state quarterfinal game in the Williams Arena in front of a Wasika fan base second, fan base second to none. It was so exciting for the team, coaches, fans, and the whole Wasika student body. It was special because no other Wasika girls basketball team had ever gotten this far. It was history. Then it happened, COVID. As the team was literally getting ready to get on the bus to go back to Williams Arena to play the semi-final game, they were told that the state tournament had been canceled. It was devastating for all involved, especially the team members, coaches, and their fans, including the Los Angeles School. This brings us back to the reason for the letter. We believe there should be a Los Angeles banner hanging in the gym or in addition to the road sign with the other state champions recognizing this team. After all, their quest to bring a state championship home to Los Angeles School District was cut short by a pandemic not by a loss. And furthermore, they were the last public school left in the state 2A tournament. Other schools in the same situation have done something to recognize their 220 girls basketball teams, such as Waterville did. We appreciate you taking the time to read this letter and know you're all busy with a lot of other school district business. I spoke briefly, briefly to your athletic director about this request and didn't get much satisfaction. 
So we are taking this request for consideration to the Las Vegas School Board in hopes you make a decision to honor these incredible Las Vegas student athletes. Thank you, Wade Bishop. P.S. I am a grandparent of Hannah, Sophie, and Isaac Potter, and they've been fortunate to have attended such a great school. And I know how much work and dedication it takes from everyone involved to make it a great school, because I also served on our local school board. So you, as a board, sent us a letter back. And in short, you were saying that it's hard to recognize one team because there was a lot of school teams and students in different organizations affected by COVID. And we totally agree with that. There's, I, there's students throughout everywhere that got affected by it. It's, it's crazy. It's too bad. Because we might be have some setbacks for a few years to come from this. So our letter this evening is, in response to that is, we are assuming to, uh, that you read that, I've got over that, so we've read your letter back. And our point to this is that the Wasika School, the Wasika Girls Basketball Team, that year did make it to the state semifinals, which I'm reiterating, which is the farthest any girls basketball team has ever gotten. And they were recognized by the Minnesota State High School League with a trophy stating that they were the 2020 state finalist team. Now this was sent to the school after the tournament. So they didn't receive it when they were up there, of course, because they were still playing and was heading up to the final state semifinals game. This was sent down later, and I think every each and every individual one got to go in there and have their picture taken with it because you had to be so many feet apart. They couldn't have a team picture at that time. And uh, I think the coach is with them when they had the picture taken. So what we're asking is that the Wasika School District do the same with some type of recognition in the gym. Because the Minnesota State High School League had recognized them as a state finalist that year. And uh, other than that, I just was going to tell you that I am a fan of Wasika School District. You guys got to go over here. Uh, there's a lot of great kids over here. And... Uh, <coughs> My grandchildren are pretty fortunate to have this school district to go to. So, Matt might want to add something there, but thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Wade. Uh, the only thing I wanted to add was, um, there's, it's not the same, the 2020 girls basketball team is not the same, same as a state champion. Um, totally get that. Um, they didn't have the opportunity to play for it, but they also didn't get the opportunity that everybody else that would have been in that same situation would normally have coming back to a school full, a gym full of kids, you know, for a reception, because we were playing in the semifinals. If we win, we go to the finals. If we lose, we go to the consolation game. Either way, we would have came back and there would have been some type of reception for the kids and all that type of stuff. And none of that happened. Um, so just something, what I would love you to consider, some kind of recognition for that team related to it. And it's two years later, obviously, a lot of those kids have moved on to other things. Um, would love to have something, you know, potentially in the gym that recognized that. Certainly not at the state championship level because it wasn't a state championship, but it was a state finalist, one of the final four. So if you could consider something like that, that's what we would uh, appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess just as a follow up, um, there's some new information in that conversation based on what we've previously had discussion about. So. Um, I'll have a conversation with with our administration about that that idea, and we'll bring it back to the board with some ideas. So, okay, okay. sounds fair. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. thank you for coming. That's a little. There was more context there than the initial email interaction. So. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. All right, and uh, let's see. So just as a reminder, if you are ever unable to come to our meetings um, or uncomfortable with attending, you can always send any comments or emails ahead of time to the Wasika district at gmail.com and we will always read any emails. We did not have any for tonight. So that was the end of our public comment.
or recognition of visitors. So I'll move on with the payment of claims. And Scott, you were able to review the claims for the month of February. Yes, I would like to make a recommendation um, to approve the action of payment of those claims in the uh, accounts payable in the amount of $1,722,325.69. Which does not include dental <coughs> and payroll in the amount of $834,427.51. Right, can I second. get a second? Second. Second. All right. All approve? Aye. 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 Anybody Aye. disagree? All right. Motion passes unanimously. All right. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Can I get an approval for the minutes? I move we have approved the minutes of the February 17th, 2022 meeting. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Can I get a, an approval for the employment and contract agenda? I'll make a, a, a approval of employment and contract agenda. Okay. As seen. Get a uh, second. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes unanimously. And we'll move on to the information items. Uh, we'll start with the superintendent report by Mr. Hudspeth. Yeah. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the time to be with you all this evening. Uh, the significant part of our updates this evening will be with regarding to our uh, fiscal year 22 budget, which uh, Ms. Beery will cover with you here shortly. But a few things I wanted to just mention uh, to the board here this evening. Um, the first, in the area of our strategic plan, the area of student achievement. Um, last evening, we had our district advisory and accountability advisory committee meeting which, um, you know, the acronym of DAC here for us and with the opportunity to review mid-year assessment results and how our students were progressing this year and how our um, buildings were responding to students and how, how their needs were, were um, being met and evolving throughout the year. And there was some very positive news uh, in that conversation with regards to how our students are, are making progress. You know, we've been, we've been using the moniker, it's okay to be where we are, but not okay to stay there all year long. And based on the growth that we're seeing, we're seeing a high percentage of our students making really solid growth this year. So extra kudos to our teachers and all of our staff that supports all of our students because um, we, we often have said this year, our students weren't behind, they survived a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so now we're moving forward from where we are. And we've seen really um, some strong gains. Uh, and I think we're gonna see that in our end of the year results. We are accountable for those end of the year results and we're gonna see some progress in that area. Um, what I'm also excited about um, it, through our vision card process, through our operational plan that we created last summer. Um, and I think our, our DAC committee members can comment on this during their committee reports, but I, I would say that our principals know their data. Mm -hmm. They know what's happening in their buildings, they know what's happening with their students, and therefore, obviously, our teachers do as well and they're communicating with their principals. So um, the first part of making sure we can respond to student need is knowing what the student need is. And, and the process we have in place right now um, is not anything new, but it's a, it's a revisit and perhaps making it more robust in terms of how we're consistently using the same assessments uh, for learning for students. Um, it's one thing to find a, uh, an assessment and get a final grade, but most of our assessment is to be able to um, adjust our instruction going forward. Um, the end goal, right, is they graduate with some options for life. So what they do in fifth grade is really important to be able to respond for sixth grade. It's not the end of the world, but it is how do we respond and get them ready so when they graduate 12th grade, they have options. Whatever they want to do, whatever that is, college, career, um, military, whatever students want to do, they want to have options leaving our district. So I'm excited about our student achievement progress on the strategic plan. In the workforce area, um, significant conversations that I've been part of in the last few weeks with regards to the potential manufacturing resource center here in town. Um, what that is, is that's an opportunity for um, the city and the county have been working together because the district can't actually be an applicant on this grant. It's an EDA grant um, to achieve some construction funds and, and potentially building acquisition funds from the EDA, federal EDA. And we identified a site here in town they potentially could, could purchase to be able to provide programming. Minnesota State Mankato has met with us, South Central College has met with us to 
be able to have a presence here in town for um, such as food science, agri-science, a research facility, uh, potentially um, engineering. Uh, we talked about manufacturing. We've had um, our last meeting had seven or eight industry uh, mm -hmm. employers here in town, as well as I, I would say the what I would call the high brass from MSU was over here, as well as um, Dr. Parker from South Central College. And so we've been working with um, the city and the county, um, the universities. You know, we are, we we are, have a very facilitative role in that. And Clint Link has been a significant. Um, um, He's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting on bringing that group together because it will benefit our students through through PSEO work, through um, internship work. Um, it's also to upscale current employees. So it's still early in the process. We're looking at probably, um, I think their county is hoping to submit that grant this spring at some point or early summer. But it's a, it's a fantastic example of something that's been talked about for a number of years. And a couple of twists and turns and curveballs, if you will, have come along the way that in many leadership situations just sets it aside and we just won't move forward, or it's over. But because of the collaborative nature of, of the county, I can't say enough about um, County Administrator Michael Johnson and, and City Administrator um, um, Lee Matson with, with his role in that, um, being able to work together to keep that, okay, I, I, the city can't do this part quite the same way we thought to because of the EDA requirements, maybe the county can pick that up. And how do we as a school district continue to support that? So really get engaging in that process. Um, we are at this point really just a user of whatever they <laughs> they produce, but it really will benefit our students to keep that thing moving forward. And to have a, have a higher ed presence in the community, particularly from a research base, as well as some coursework, um, could really benefit Wasika for a number of ways. So we're looking forward to keeping that conversation moving forward. Uh, in the community engagement area, um, Facilities engagement. That's really the, the biggest piece right now. Shared with the facilities committee earlier this week. Um, we did meet uh, last week with with um, the survey uh, consultant who we talked about at our last board meeting, board work session, um, with a proposal. Uh, we submitted a bunch of information this week, uh, just today actually. He's on spring break, lucky him. And so as he returns next week, he'll be providing a draft for us for uh, his part of the survey, scientific survey, and then we'll create our or we'll seek a version of that thereof. And um, much, much after the, the discussion we had last, last time at our work session, uh, which was really interesting, um, you know, sample size of 400 came up and lots of research and statistics on that. And, you know, a, doing a sample size of 400 in this community will provide about a 5% margin of error. Uh, to double that only makes that a 4% margin of error based on the history he has with surveys. So um, I think we're in a good spot to be able to do some investment to figure out what our next plans are, are with that. Um, then the last thing I'd like to add is just our measurement process. We've been talking all year long about accountability and how we make sure that we're able to really measure where we are. Um, but we want to measure it the way we want to do it mm -hmm. um, because we know that the assessments the state uses are one day, one test on one day, and they're very important. All those things are really, really something we need to work on, but we want to measure what our success is going to be. So, so from a timeline perspective, this spring and early summer, we'll be collecting results from this year's vision card. I gave you a mid-year update a few weeks ago. Um, this summer, we'll be finalizing those results. Some of those things such as graduation rates, you know, spring assessment scores don't come in until summertime. Um, then we'll review and update our three-year operational plan going into the next year. Um, and the three-year board agenda, which you worked on here for us last, last summer. And then in the fall, we'll be looking at those results to create the next vision card and operational plan. And you know, our, our, our principals in our last principal meeting, I mean, we had a conversation about this, and it was, you know, we're trying to, everyone's trying to find their role in the process this particular year, but hitting a groove going into next year of us all feeling like we're, mm -hmm. we're moving in the right direction. I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with the progress we have. We have exceptional, you, you know this, we have exceptional leaders, we have exceptional staff in all areas, we have exceptional mm -hmm. students. And so when we keep moving forward in this regard, um, Wasika, as our commenter said, is an, is an excellent school district that only is going to get better. Mm -hmm. And one of my goals coming out of this pandemic is we have our challenges, but we have a plan. And we know where we're heading for. You can hear that in the budget conversation too. Did this year provide some challenges based on enrollment? It sure did but we have a plan and we're moving forward to, to be the best district we can be. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. I would stand for any questions before we move on. 
Does anybody have any questions? Oh, that's a great report. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right, and we'll move on to the reports by um, from Elizabeth. So I'll let you um, continue with the financial update and then the enrollment update. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, we're really going to focus on um, our updated budget, our final 2021-2022 budget. I will share my screen here with you. <coughs> and kind of walk me through where we have been and, and where we think we're going and how we're going to build in our 22-23 school, school budget. Um, so a little bit of history, backstory. Uh, we did bring the preliminary budget to the school board on the June 17th meeting. Um, our business year runs July 1 through June 30th, and we need to have an approved budget in place before July 1 and before our business year starts. With that budget, we had to make a lot of assumptions. Um, depending upon the timing of the year, um, during the summer of 2021, legislature was still in session. So we had to make some assumptions on what the formula increase could or could not be for our district. So that was one assumption that we had made. Um, one assumption that we always need to make is en enrollment. What is that going to look like in coming off of a pandemic year? Um, maybe a little bit more of a challenge than it normally is, but again, not something that we're um, not used to. Other things that we made assumptions on building our preliminary budget were contract negotiations. So all of our contracts were up for negotiation. We do a two-year cycle with our contracts, which were set to expire June 30th of 2021. Um, so trying to build in what that may look like. Another factor in that is we normally are not fully completed with our hiring process. So not having exact individuals in, in places and hiring and maybe placing on the salary schedule, we're making some assumptions that way. Um, the last thing that we also are taking into consideration is our audit is not yet complete at that point. So our, again, our, we were approving a budget before our current budget year was done making estimates on what we thought our ending fund balance would be moving forward to the next school year. So a lot of different puzzle pieces in there, um, and that's how we built our preliminary budget. And that's why we take a look at mid-year of how accurate were our assumptions, what were some adjustments we need to make, and, and what are the trends that we're currently seeing so far during the school year. So I'm going to skip that one, and I will come back to it. So um, the information that we're going to talk about today is, again, what was the information that we gathered throughout the beginning of the year and what can we do to tighten up our mid-year budget so we have a better idea of, of what we think our ending fund balance is going to be so then we can um, as closely and accurately start building our 22-23 budget um, which we will bring to you again back in June here. So a couple different things. The first screen that you're seeing, and I apologize, these numbers are small and I hope you do have a copy of our budget in front of you as well so you can see those numbers a little bit more clearly. Um, this is just our general fund budget. So this is just one component of the entire school district budget. It just happens to be the largest part of our um, school district budget and where we have the most flexibility regarding our operations. So um, as you can see, um, the, the first column with numbers is our audited fund balance as of June 30th, 2021. So these are our actual audited fund balance numbers. Um, that we presented to the school board in the December meeting. So now we know where our true beginning is for our 21-22 school year. So all of those numbers are available. Um, then we're tightening up any revenues, expenditures, and looking what our projected ending fund balance will be as of June 30th, 2022. Um, we thought we, I'm gonna, at, at the very top, we have restricted and, and assigned. So these are very specific, restricted, um, accounts are um, parameters set by an outside entity, more than likely the state or the federal government, telling us that we do have funds available, but they are for very specific purposes. The next section is called our assigned fund balance, and that is what we at a local level have decided we would like to set funds aside for, for a specific reason. Again, we at the local level are um, directing how we will um, allocate those revenues and our expenditures. The last part, which is the biggest part of our budget, is this unassigned fund balance. And this is, again, where we have the most flexibility, and this is where most of our operations lie within our fund, our, our fund balance and our district. So auditing-wise, we are beginning the year with $6,364,000 as, as our starting fund balance. Based on adjustments to revenues and expenditures, and we'll talk a little bit about those, we feel we are going to end this year with a $5,081,884 dollar fund balance. 
Um, what does that mean, right? So when we created our preliminary budget, we thought we would end this current school year uh, with about a 27% fund balance. And when we're talking percentages, that means um, in that unassigned fund balance, the percentage um, of a fund balance we have based on our expenditures for the year. So we thought we would have 27% of our expenditures available um, in a fund balance. With this updated number, this little over $5 million, um, we're looking at a 23% fund balance. So we are projecting to spend into our fund balance a little bit more than we had anticipated with our preliminary budget. Two major drivers. Unfortunately, we're looking at it, uh, adjustments on expenditure side and adjustments on the revenue side. For expenditures, we have settled the majority of our contracts. So now we know settlement-wise what can we do if we put in actual numbers um, for contract settlements. And the majority of our budget, about 75% of our budget, is based on um, salary, salaries and benefits. One of the reasons it's a little bit larger this year is um, some of our contracts um, are heavier on their percentage for this year, and the change for next year will be minimal. So over a two-year span, we'll recognize um, the total cost, but unfortunately, not, not necessarily unfortunately, it's just different than what we had anticipated budget-wise. Um, we have a little bit heavier expenditure this year. It will not be as heavy next year as what we had anticipated. So over the two-year span, we will even out. Um, but that is why we're a little bit heavier on expenditures this year. Other things playing into that substitute costs are up. Um, again, we were estimating what that would look like. Uh, again, transitioning back, and so we were probably a little bit more conser uh, uh, not as conservative as we should have been with um, substitute but, uh, budgets, so we did increase that a little bit. The other thing we're running into is just our utility expenditure in general. All of our utilities are up, up. Um, not much we can control with that, so we are adjusting our budget accordingly. On the revenue side, um, and we will, I'll show you a, a couple of slides here as well, enrollment is the, the major driver of all of our of a majority of our revenue in the again, I'll show you a couple different ways that we see the peak at that. Unfortunately, our student enrollment is not where we had projected it to be. Um, so we are right right sizing that, I guess, if you will, on what we think our actual uh, enrollment is going to be. We had projected that a few more students would come back into our site, and we just have not seen that yet. A couple of things coming into play is um, we do not have as many homeschool students as we did last year, but not as many came back as we had anticipated. Same story again with some of our online schools. Some of those students are transitioning back, but not as many as we had anticipated. And then overall, just our community population for school-age students um, just continues to decline. That's not something, anything new. That's not anything that has taken us by surprise. It's just maybe at a little faster acceleration rate than what we had projected. I'm going to pause for a second because I'm Speaking a lot, any specific questions regarding the general fund? Anybody have any questions? No, I think we're good, Elizabeth. Okay. This is um, a, the enrollment summary that's actually also attached to your board agenda. And this is really what we're looking at when we're talking about enrollment trends. So again, we, we have seen the trend. We have projected that we are going to decline. But you can see from the 20... Um, 19, 2020 20 year to 2020, 20, 21, 21, 22, it's just been a, a faster acceleration and decline than what we have, were anticipating. Um, you can see we didn't decline as fast as we did this year from last year versus last year from the prior year. You can see that bigger gap. Um, so so I, I would say it's slowed down, but again, we just haven't popped back up to what we thought we would be at. So this is really what's driving our, our enrollment projections. That's why we monitor every single month of how are we looking, how are we trending, and as you can see, the trend isn't any different um, than what it's been in prior years. Okay. Elizabeth, the only thing I would add, if I if I could, there with regard to enrollment, particularly with those who have chosen the chosen an online option, you know, we're in a we're in a little bit of a challenging place where we have roughly 30 students open enrolling to an online school somewhere else that's not enough students for us to provide our own online school and be able to make that work however we do then lose the revenue for those students who are open enrolling elsewhere so that's a that's a challenging scenario as we continue to work with families who are homeschooling we support that for families of course as well but um, I would say that 
across the state of Minnesota, um, districts are working through where, where have the students gone. And I, I feel like we have a, a, a solid sense in Wasika of what our students are doing and what their needs are. And in some cases we can meet them, in some cases we can't. For that, for that small of a student population, it's hard for us to build a cohesive enough online program. But then for those students that that works for them, we unfortunately sometimes lose that, that enrollment for that piece. So I think that was just a, when it's speaking to enrollment, conversations I've had with some people in the community as well, do we know what the students are doing then? And in Wasika, I think we have a pretty good handle on where we are, and that's. It, but it did take us this year right. to kind of figure out where that was. So, so Charlie, how, did you have a question how, earlier? How yeah. do we, how do we, how do, or how do you monitor that the homeschool student? How do you monitor to see that they are that they are attaining the, the, the advancement that they should? Be? Is there any is there any involvement in the school at all on that? Not necessarily from our perspective, but the state does require them to report some assessment yep. results. Okay, so yep. the online school is responsible for? Yeah, two different things. For a homeschool student, the parent is, is, is doing that. For an online school, then the online district is doing that. Correct. And they have to submit to me, um, the district, and I happen to be the signature person for that, um, when they go to do a homeschool that they are, understand all the requirements they need to from the state of Minnesota, and then we have record of all of that. Um, if they were to return to our district, they would, um, which we hope they, they, they choose to at some point, um, that's then something they would submit to us as a record request type thing. Okay. So. Do online students take the MCAs? It's a pu public school students are required to take those. Yeah. Do they take them through the online school or through us? Well, so online, a student who open enrolls to an online school is not our student. So they're okay. not they're not on our enrollment books. So they would do everything through their school. They're not, it wouldn't be any, it would be a similar concept to a student who is open enrolled to Janesville. Okay. No, they're, they're getting their school there. Um, we have the Southwest Metro <coughs> wrinkle, which is a little bit different. We have about eight students doing that right now. That's different than this students open enroll elsewhere to get okay. that. That's more of a course by course basis thing. Do you know, is there a particular online school that is has most of these students? Or are we've they pretty seen, much spread out? Well, the, the two that I've probably seen the most of in the last few years has been there's um, um, Connections Academy, mm -hmm. uh, which I think they have a campus in Houston, like Houston Public, and then Houston Public Schools has a online after Minnesota Virtual Academy. Mm -hmm. There's three or four options that are out there right now. Um, some districts are actually marketing and recruiting mm -hmm. um, students for that. Um, public to school districts, larger ones that can create a program. Um, school districts who try to provide that, the anecdotal feedback is that doesn't usually work very well for the school district. Um, so it's mostly the virtual academies who are the ones who end up with the students because that's what they do mm -hmm. and they're good at it. So. so how about the students that are going to our are taking classes at, at MSU, or are they, are they considered a student here or not? So, good, great question. The answer is yes, but the portion of their formula revenue that we would receive for the portion of their day that they're at higher ed goes to higher ed. So if they're half-time PSEO, half of their money goes to MSU or wherever they're going. So it's a, which is a, actually a legislative thing that we've been talking about. How do we make that more revenue neutral for districts? Because we want those options for our kids. It 100% is a good option for kids. But it's a, it's a challenge. Revenue is, because if we have, and the challenge for smaller districts, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm bird walking a little bit on you, Elizabeth, I apologize. But the challenge for smaller districts is that if we have four kids who choose to take a PSEO course at MSU, that's not enough that I can reduce any staff at my high school. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still paying for the teacher as if the kids were sitting in the seat, but I'm not getting the money. So it's, it, which is just a, a wrinkle of our system. So that's what we're adjusting. Yeah. They always train about this at the MSBA trainings in the financial part of it. Yeah. And this year I think is a really good year to apply that knowledge because we're seeing it firsthand. Yeah. Um, how that enrollment affects our budget. One of the ways that districts have started to work through that mm -hmm. is to increase the amount of college in the schools or yep. concurrent enrollment classes they're offering, which is where the teacher's actually teaching it here in the high school, mm -hmm. and they're getting college credit through the M through MSU. So then we're just paying a fee for the credits, sure. but the student is still our, our student the whole day. But teachers have to have a certain number of credits and masters mm -hmm. in that field to be able to get that to work. Our health, our, um, 
help me out here, Elizabeth, if I'm not going to get 100% right, but I think we have a health science class that does that, and I know our intro to ed class does that right now. And I think we have a, maybe even a physics class um, okay. for college and schools. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very cool. No, these are great conversations, and I, I appreciate you um, bringing the enrollment information up. Um, you know, and I think another one thing, just to reiterate what Eric was also mentioning, is this is not um, the, the enrollment decline is not unique to Waseca. Mm -hmm. Many districts are working through this right now of just trying to uh, get a handle on where are our students, you know, and, and again, how can we appropriately budget and plan for um, with the reality that we have less students in our building. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the remainder of our budget. So the remaining funds that we have within our budget, very uh, same concept. We have the audited numbers in where we are updating the revenues, expenditures, and our projected fund balance. Um, some of the larger funds within here will be food service. Um, again, a little bit more of a unique year, kind of moving back to that in, in normal um, operations. And, and Ross and the staff have been doing a great job. Um, I think participation has been um, going very well. Um, as a reminder, this year continues to be a free year for students, so all students are getting free meals. We do foresee that that will end after this year. Right now, the waivers are not being extended at this point, so um, more than likely, we will be going back to free and reduced status and or paid status with next year's budget. So that'll be something that we're going to be navigating as we build next year's budget. Community education, um, different types of restrictions within the fund. Um, but again, as you can see, they have um, continued to um, really grow a healthy fund balance, and those are some of the things that we're watching as well, of different components and how can they blend and braid together. Building construction, these are the remaining funds of an indoor air quality project bond that we had sold, and um, with the approval of our bond attorney, we're able to um, utilize the remaining funds for a building automation system upgrade. Um, so most of them will be completed this year. We have just a remaining uh, a couple of remaining dollars that will probably eke into July and August, which would be next year's budget. So that's why you see a little bit of a remaining balance in the building construction fund. Debt service fund, this is where um, the, the basically the in and out, the out of the loans payable that we have, um, uh, our debt obligations, that runs through that fund. Uh, trust fund and the, the eight, fund 18, which is a custodial fund, most of our scholarships run through that. So again, we're more the fiscal host for those individuals, and, and again, it's an in and out, but we need to make sure we're accounting for it. And the very last fund would be our dent internal service fund, which is our dental fund. We, we host our own dental program. We don't outsource that. That's something we do internally. Um, and again, that fund balance has been extremely healthy over the past couple of years. These are just another way to look um, at a, a different way to look at all of the different funds that we have available. So this is just another way to look at our expenditures. And it's correlating to the numbers that we saw, you can see almost 81% of our budget is the general fund. And so it's just breaking it down in a visual of how all of, all of the funds uh, work together. So overall, our expect, excuse me, expected expenditure budget is just over a little over $33 million. Revenue is very similar story where you're seeing that general fund at 80%. Uh, projected overall budget of 30,133,000. And then I wanted to break down the general fund just a little bit for you. Again, this is our largest fund. Where do all of the components come from? And this really lends to our conversation again on the enrollment. So that very bottom one state at 76.3%, largely driven by student enrollment. And you can see we rely heavily on that source, that funding source, for our operation. Um, I'm going to go back up to the top. The levy will comprise about 8% of our general fund budget. Local dollars, 6%. So that's more our activity fees, medical assistance, uh, participation fees, gate fees. Um, that has jumped up a little bit this year now that we're able to have activities and people participating again. So if you would have looked at last year's budget, that would have been down a little bit. Federal is up a little bit higher, and that's really due to the, all of the different um, federal relief, relief funds that we have available to us. So again, if you look at prior budgets, versus this one, this would be higher, and those federal relief funds are helping us um, 
ease into right sizing our staff numbers, our staff ratios to student numbers based on our enrollment. Um, that way we can ease into um, a, a, a plan that works for our district um, and hopefully through natural attrition um, be able to uh, work on our staff sizing. This, I just like to show, uh, this is another way to look at our fund balance, days and percentage. So those red lines are our fund balance policy. So our fund balance policy states that we'd like to have between 15 and 35% of a fund balance available. Um, that is quite a, a, a large range. Um, one of the things that we are trying to minimize is our need to borrow funds. Um, so if we try to stay within that 15 to 35%, um, more than likely, and, and it hasn't happened for quite a few years, we won't have to borrow for our cash flow needs. Um, we don't want to be paying interest on money just to be able to make payroll because we want to be able to do, you know, put that money where, where the programming um, needs are versus paying it in interest. So if we can stay between those red bars, that's our goal, um, to, to reduce uh, the chance that we would need to borrow funds. So you can see what we've done the past couple of years. Um, again, in that 2022 school year, we are looking at that about 23%. So again, that's still a very healthy fund balance. Um, but what we're doing is um, doing everything we can, again, to gradually right size based on our student enrollment. Um, and, and that's not something that we can do in, in one year. And so again, we're using those federal dollars to help us gradually um, come into the right size with our, our staffing. I'm going to flip back up, but also continue to entertain any questions. One thing I wanted to show is just our district website. Um, so if you go to departments and district office, you can find all of this information on our district web website. So once um, we work through this and, and if the board approves this, we will post this under the district budget and you'll see multiple years of budget there. So if anybody has any questions, they can reference back, um, again, of past history. Um, the full budget narrative will be there. It won't just be the... Um, the, the one sheet a page of information that you're looking at today, there'll be the narrative behind all of the information. It, it details our federal dollars, what we've been allocated, what the usage is, how long we have to use them. Um, a lot of uh, information in there as well as the graphs. Other things available would be our audited financial statements. Um, if you click on finance, there's going to be like our truth and taxation presentation. We try to put as much information out there um, should people have questions. And I just want to make sure, do anybody, does anyone else have any further questions on the budget? Anyone have? Could, can we go back to enrollment for just a second? Sure. Uh, do you want to look at that? Um, well, um, my question is actually for our two student representatives. Do you know of uh, other students that are choosing the online option? And if you do, could you make, have you had ever had any conversation with them about that and what they might be saying about how it's going or why they chose that or? Um, I do know, I have, a, there are a couple people in band that do just band and they do all, everything else on um, homeschool or online. Okay. And um, I'm not really sure, I haven't really talked to them and why that's been their choice. I know one person does, um, goes um, to a different place and does like a co-op um, okay. once a week with other students that are taking those online courses. And I do know of a couple other people that just, I think it was just with COVID, they just decided to stay with it because it was it was best for their family mm -hmm. and for them it's just safety wise and they ended up liking it. So, but okay. they come back for band and I don't, I think they like it. I don't. Okay. Um, I know one who uh, used to go to school full time and then COVID hit and she hasn't come back. But I don't know what her reason what her reason was for not coming back. I think it was just easier for her to do it from home and she does mostly PSEO anyways. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I know like a whole family that's all homeschooled, but I don't I think some of them come here but not all of them. But I don't know the reasoning behind why not all, they all don't come here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank, I th thank you, girls, because that's one thing we want to be cautious of is not making assumptions mm -hmm. about what people's motivations might be. Right. So, yep. that very good response. Good question. Good responses, girls. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for Elizabeth? All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's really helpful.
Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. We'll move on to committee board member reports. So I will start with you, Grant. <gasps> um, <laughs> Uh, we had a policy committee last week. We went through the policies that are actually we're going to approve tonight. Um, uh, we also had the finance committee, which as Elizabeth went through, we went basically to talk to that and got to ask a lot of questions there. Uh, I was part of the DAC committee yesterday, and you summarized that very well. Um, I, I would reiterate, too, that I, I, I got the same feeling that, you know, our leaders and administrators know very well what's going on, and I think they got a very good handle of being able to say, here's what the numbers say, and how does that help us make decisions? So, mm -hmm. it's very good. Um, and we had a legislative committee, I think, prior to our work session. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, my conclusion from that is there's a lot of things happening, and it's a moving target, and it changes all the time, and it keeps changing. <laughs> yeah. So I know there, and I've listened in on some of the uh, MSBA Friday uh, oh, yeah. things about that, and yeah. it is, it, we're coming up. I think we're on. This Friday will be two weeks or is it one week? Yeah, so the Friday the 25th is the first deadline. So next Friday will be their okay. first deadline to get some of those bills heard. So right now they're frantically trying to get their bills <laughs> yeah. to be heard by committee. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to kind of see where it all right. comes out. But yeah. I think that was the committee's eye. Okay. Thank the you. only one that I was a part of was the, uh, the uh, finance committee. And uh, um, it was all based on, on, our, <coughs> on our budget or our mid-year budget so go ahead thank you charlie <clears throat> yeah i was on the policy committee with grant there and and they're, they're on the agenda tonight also i did reach out to the hockey board i have the hockey or the arena board and because we haven't had a meeting for meeting forever and so i don't think they're cooking up something for that so i'm okay. not sure what where we're going to be at on that but uh, other than that, no, it's been quiet. So it's been good Thank after, you. Thank after you for doing negotiations. That. Yeah. <laughs> that got to be a that was a, that was a long that was a long process. But oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, that's it for me. Cool, Dave. Okay. Um, well, I attended the personnel, policy, facilities, and uh, DAC committee meetings, and I've got just a few things here. Um, personnel, we talked quite a bit about, um, and Elizabeth alluded to this um, just a little bit ago about um, in the future trying to balance our staff needs um, with our enrollment and our course offerings. Um, policy committee, um, one of the policies that we went through that I, I always find interesting is the student fundraising and that whole world. Um, facilities again we're looking at moving ahead with community surveys I don't know if I'm gonna steal mr. Green's thunder or not but he mentioned about uh, indoor uh, air quality reports on all the buildings are good correct yep. okay so that's that's a good thing and um, the district accountability advisory committee um, Predicted graduation rates, uh, high school 90 to 94 percent, which could always be better, but I don't think that's too bad. Uh, ALC, uh, 84 to 92 percent. And one thing I just thought we, we've got, I don't know who this person is, but there's a person who recently attended the ALC for seven years before graduating. And I don't know who they are, but I think they deserve a big pat on the back because if that isn't perseverance and persistence, um, I don't know what is. Yeah, nice accomplishment. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, and then we also talked to some about um, testing. Uh, we do fast bridge testing at Hartley, reading and math. Correct me if I'm mm -hmm. in error here. Uh, we do NWEA testing at WIS reading and math, and also over at the junior high, just reading, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, some grade levels, yep. And of course, we've got the MCAs coming up this spring. That's enough. Wow, man. <laughs> um, I had the, the finance meeting, and we talked a lot about the PSEO and how um, 
the students are, you know, considered differently with the funding and how that fits into the picture. And that we're not in a crisis at this moment, but we definitely need to be very good stewards and good fiduciaries of the, um, the budget. So we just need to watch that. Um, I did the Insurance and Safety Committee. This is the first year that I've ever done that one, and that was interesting um, to hear all the different buildings and the different concerns. A couple of the teachers had brought up that when they're in a busier classroom and announcements go on and notifications come on, they need uh, different notifications that are maybe flashing lights or something, uh, like if you're in band or choir or the art room. And you don't think about that, or if you're in the um, industrial tech area. So those are just some of the items that they're looking at. Um, and uh, the air quality and everything, the radon tests were looking good. So that's an interesting committee, and it talks about how their um, dental usage hasn't been where it's been at in the past, but it's definitely not anything for concern, probably will be used you know, more frequently now. I think people were just staying home and not going to the doctor quite as much before um, the last couple of years. And then the personnel committee, um, you kind of covered everything with that one. Um, Clint Link with going on with the, um, the program, he's kind of, heading that off with the, the lead. And then Jenny Pena, um, hopefully we'll get some help with the, um, the website. Every time I go on Facebook, I don't go on as often as I used to, but um, every time I pop on there, I see something at Hartley or something from the, LL, the ALC. I mean, it's just popping up with all the information, what's going on, so it's very cool. And the superintendent evaluation, Everything is on target, and we kind of talked about how you're doing with your doctorate studies and how the DAC committee is looking um, that you went over with all the information with the progress with the students. That's all that I have. Um, how about you, Lindsay? Well, there is a lot going on at the high school with the nice. new trimester and sports ending. <laughs> um, the first is that there's a banned burger fry and fish fry tomorrow night from 5.30 to 7 at the American Legion. So we would love it if people would come to support our bands. It is $9 a ticket. And just for incentive to come, the junior high jazz band and both high school jazz bands will be performing throughout the night. So um, come to support us. We'd love to have you there. Second, the l musical this spring is Legally Blonde, and we are so, so, so excited. Oh, fun. Um, the performances are April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. April 1st and 2nd is 7 p.m., and April 3rd is 4 p.m., and I believe tickets are already on sale at yep. the Wasika Music Company, and um, th which are $7. If you are not able to pre purchase them, they are $10 at the door, and we are rating the show a PG-13, oh. so... Just been warned. <laughs> um, but we are so, so, so excited for the musical. So exciting. Um, spring sports have started this week, and a few will start next week. So we're excited to, for, to, for those to start. Um, speech team is going to subsections in Loyola on March 29th. So we wish them luck. The State Street Singers, we finished our competition season in um, early March. And we finished fourth runner-up at Emmitsburg Finals. And it was, I believe it was the best we've ever done yeah. at that competition. So we were super excited to end our season mm -hmm. with that. Um, and then State Solo Ensemble Contest is at MSU um, on March 26th, which is a Saturday. And so we just wish our band and choir students that are going best of luck. Mm -hmm. And finally, the Spanish trip to Costa Rica um, leaves on March 27th. And oh, the handful fun. of students that are going are so excited and they cannot wait to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she covered a lot of the stuff, <laughs> too. but I still have some stuff. Uh, the Courage Retreat tomorrow for the 8th graders. Um, I believe there are 50 seniors signed up to help, and oh, nice. we're all super wow. excited to go. Honestly, I think the seniors are more excited. <laughs> um, uh, we have the close-up trip, which is leaving on March 28th, so the school is going to be missing quite a few of us with both of those trips gone. Um, winter sports are coming to an end. Basketball season ended, which is really sad. Um, BPA, we had state BPA uh, like a week ago. I don't know. It was a while ago. But um, we have 
three people for sure going to nationals. Uh, Kyle Chen, Will, I don't know what Will, King. Will King, and Daniel Kohler are going to nationals. Um, and we have plenty of student council service projects we're working on right now. Uh, we're making it a big deal this spring to do a lot of them, and some of them have been like reading to the Hartley kids, mm -hmm. which we did recently. Um, we're planning some stuff for April, such as like baking goods for like um, the EMTs and other oh, nice. service members. Yeah. And then we're uh, planning something to clean up around like the school grounds and stuff cool. for Hartley and the high school and other schools. Oh, nice. Do you guys ever sleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not time for that. <laughs> you can sleep later. Yeah. <laughs> wow, lots going on. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, we can move on to the recognition and positive board feedback. Dave, I'll start with you. Oh, um, well, I'm going to bring up that student again one more time. Seven years to go through the ALC, but made it through and graduated. I think that's just fantastic. And um, a few weeks ago when I was at Hartley, um, down in the basement with the third graders, um, Chris Lapidus, who's the family services coordinator, she got a grant from the PTO and she goes around once a month with the third graders and she has a cart and she has healthy snacks and uh, she, she takes this cart around to each third grade classroom and the kids all get some of these snacks and she she tells them a little bit about the snacks and how they can make them at home and how they're good for them. And uh, you know, this is just something she kind of, I think, thought up on her own and, and the PTO support. So um, give Chris credit for, for going a little above and beyond there. Very cool, thank you. Charlie? Uh, went to the boys' basketball game here a week and a half ago, and was they played their hearts out, but they just couldn't quite <laughs> they just couldn't quite uh, compete with the Maple River kids. They were just outsized, you know. But the, but they they worked hard. They didn't let down. They they went the whole game. Was just good to see, and also the um, the choir concert here a couple of weeks ago. So that that was an excellent job there. Uh, that was uh, the girls were in that, and it was fun to see you guys have. I want to see it having fun, you yeah. know, so that's what it's all about. So, Very cool. Yeah, yeah, so and that's you. been it, yeah. Cool. Scott? Um, I just, for all of the student athletes that we have, um, to see all the recognition that they're getting this year, there's been a lot. Um, same with um, um, the choirs and their recognitions, the best ever. Um, um, and the things that are coming up, I just, I, it's a shout out to all of our, our students and what they're really involved in. They're in a lot of different things. So that's all. Cool. Grant? I was going to bring up the same BPA. The three who are going on to BPA Nationals yep. is pretty amazing. So um, that was Daniel, Will, and Kyle. Yes, Kyle. So, yes, that was very good. There's also, I know, I saw recently there was, the, we had two robotics teams. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, I believe, also advanced on and went to the state, and that was a couple weeks ago. Um, so, you know, another testament that we had a lot of, a lot of high achieving students, as you said. So, mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely. And then FFA has um, a couple of kids. Cameron had gotten the, um, with their science fair project, looking at the accuracy and labeling um, with potting soil and, then Carly, I don't know her last name. Hamilton. Who? Carly Hamilton. Oh, nice. They, um, she did um, a science fair project with um, the positive perception of the American ag industry. So very cool. And then if you haven't had a chance, look at the little fish that the kids down in the ECFE area made they are so cute they got wood donated fish and they're decorated and they're so fun and then today that was in um carrie morris's room and then mrs susie um Suze's room she did leprechaun made little leprechaun traps and what's funny is i've never heard of doing that before and a lady at work her um kids are smaller four and nine they made leprechaun traps too, so <laughs> we'll have to see if they caught any when they come in this class tomorrow. 
And then the ALC had, um, they celebrated Pie Day, so they did trivia and had a whole bunch of different pies. Looked really good. How'd we miss that? I know. <laughs> Would have been a good day to visit. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to mention, too, in addition to the burger fry, tomorrow night, the uh, early childhood fair oh, yeah. is at mm -hmm. WIS, I think, from 5 to 7. Yep. If you've never been to that, it's kind of it's kind of mm -hmm. neat what all the different services and programs and all that for our little kids. So Very cool. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else that you'd like uh, to add in? Yeah, I guess I'm just going to say a preemptive thank you to our band boosters and the Sons of American Legion for our burger fry tomorrow. We're hoping that it turns out oh, yeah. and make, get a lot of people to come. So I just thank them for all their hard work. I just wanted to mention, uh, like, all the coaches coming up for spring sports and hopefully that our seasons are all turning out good, so. Yeah, nice. Can't wait. The only thing I will add is a new thing. Just why you're noticing Caitlin and I frantically writing here with this is so. What we're going to do now is we're going to take these recognitions and put them in the month Monday newsletter. Yep. So I think something we want to do to celebrate our staff and students is when, um, when you all share these things on Thursday evenings at our board meetings, if you're watching the meeting, you hear them. If you don't watch the meeting, you sometimes miss them. And so one thing that we just were brainstorming the other day as a way to continually get this out even more for people to see it. Um, and so we're going to, uh, between Caitlin and myself and Elizabeth, we'll summarize, you know, these these celebrations. And we'll, every Monday when Caitlin sends out the newsletter after a board meeting, you'll include these. These will be included as well as a, on there. So you'll have an opportunity for all staff to, to see these celebrations, which is, which is quite, uh, I think, important. Oh yeah, so, there's so many cogs so to the school. So thank you, thank you for for thinking yeah. of that and, and and doing those things. I think it's really important part of our process that not every district does, and I'm yeah. I'm proud of it. So, cool. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to the action minutes or sorry, the action items. So the can I get a motion to approve um, letter A? I'll make a motion to accept um, the acceptance of gifts received and donations. Can I get a second? Second. And we'll have to do a roll call um, vote on this one. So I will start with, is, um, does anybody have any, would like, or have any discussion on that? Um, looks like there were books for the WIS and the backpack program um, with some funding came in. And then the first grade classroom education from an anonymous donor. And I want to say I helped with the backpack program in Mankato this week through my work. Um, we do volunteer hours. And it's amazing because they were packing for their spring break that's coming up. And those packets are huge with the amount of food that has gone out to these um, kids that need um, just a little bit of supplemental food source when they go home for these vacations. So that is a huge program with that back program, backpack program. Um, and they do a wonderful job. I know our Boy Scout troop has helped with that in the past. So, anybody else have anything to say? All right, I'll take a roll call. Um, we'll start with Grant. Yes. Scott? Yes. Katie's a yes. Dave? Yes. Charlie? Yes. All right, motion passes. Um, can I get an approval for B? I'll move we approve the revised 2021-2022 budget as proposed. Second. Any discussion? Just a thank you to Elizabeth and her staff for everything that they do for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. All in favor to approve, say aye. 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 All right. And motion carries. Can <clears throat> I get a motion to approve C? I'll make a motion we approve the uh, community ed hourly pay rates that become effective June 6th. Second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, um, say aye. 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 Against. Motion passes. Can I get a motion to approve letter E? I'll make a motion to approve the 2021-2023 Local 70 Working Agreement for Food Service. Second. Any questions or discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 And against, motion passes and unanimous. Now can I get a motion to approve letter E? I move that we approve the 2023 working agreement for the building technology group. Second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Against, motion passes unanimously. Um, can I get a motion? Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna award the bill. We don't have to, we're just awarding the bill for the contract um, for the tuck pointing. Right, we're awarding the bid. Yes, or, for that yeah, yeah, awarding the bid for the yes. tuck pointing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And do I need to um, say anything more about that, who it's for? No, because it's all included in, the, in your board packet, so okay. it's, we're just approving right. the awarding the bid as presented. Okay. As long as Collins here, are we are we doing the whole building or just parts of the building or uh, the entirety of the uh, uh, bid packet that we put out for uh, that scope? Is okay. All what's in the, cool. Uh, the I, I I'm just uh, s surprised about the. I am too. The high the and the low. Yeah. The difference. Mm -hmm. And I. I mean, the low bid is half the cost of the highest bid, but there's three bids right in the middle, you know, so I don't, I, I was, well, I'm a little confused on that. One. When I read through that too, though, I, I liked that, that Colin actually reached out to make sure that all the boxes were checked. So okay. I thank you for that. Yeah, doing your due diligence. Yep. That's why we keep you. <laughs> well, and, and it almost appeared that it was from ISG how is ISG part of project project yeah. manager? Okay. okay. So they're kind of the overseeing to. Yeah. Okay. okay. They, support, they support us with that process. All right. Cool. Any other discussion on that? Colin, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what we're seeing is the trend of for a job that is relatively small in some of these large contractors scope they're going to price it really premium to make it worthwhile to come to us or they're not going to do it. They're not so interested. That's, right. They're just point not interested. Yeah. 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 So that's probably the reason why we see those bids the way we do. It's highly accurate. Yep. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Not, not as much. There's a whole different quality level. It's just different level of interest. Yeah. <laughs> we want to pay them that much, they'll come and do it, but not really that, that interested. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All righty. Can I get an approval for letter G? I don't think we actually approved that yet. Um, oh, do we have to approve it? Oh, we do yeah. have to approve it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Messed with me because it didn't yeah, say. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get an approval to award the bid for the central building tuck pointing? So move. Second. Oh, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're just going to have an interesting night. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right, now we will move to, can I get an approval for G? I'll make a motion to approve the technology disposal proposal. <laughs> I'll second that, and I'd like to know how old this AS400 server is. So I used the AS400 when I took the facilities job in 2007. <laughs> That's and, old. And I, think we, and I think we replaced it the next year. It came over on the Mayflower. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. it's probably 20 at least. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. Good job for getting our money, though. Yeah. Money's worth it. Got our money's worth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is, you know about computers. Is that pretty out of date? <laughs> We got our money's worth out of it. <laughs> we got our money's worth yeah, out of it. I'd say so. Very good. All right. What's almost surprising is that there, that we will get a credit back for it, but that's good that we found that. So. Oh, yeah, very cool. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Against, motion passes. Can I get an approval for H, for the reviewed policies? I move we approve uh, the policies uh, numbers 510, uh, policy 510.1, policy 511, policy 512, and policy 513 as written in our, uh, in our uh, 
hand out here. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Um, uh, any discussion? I should maybe 510 is the activities policy. So if you if you're interested in that, you can go to the website. They're all they're all on the website. Uh, 510.1 is um, addition and elimination of activities. 511 is student fundraising. 512 is school sponsored school publications and activities. And and um, policy 513 is student promotion retentions and program design. That's what we're approving. I will say as a parent and even as a student, it's interesting to see these policies because you can see how they directly affect all the rules that you get as a parent says, oh, these are all the rules are and they, they're very in line. So it's good for consistency. Nice. All right, anything else? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion passes unanimously. All right, so that is it for the action items. And this is just a reminder for any upcoming um, items. Our next work session is Thursday, April 7th, and our next regular meeting is Thursday, April 21st. Any other reminders anybody has? I put it in the work in the update yesterday, but I believe actually next week has no committee scheduled. No. So just mm -mm. for everyone's reference for your schedules, next week is a no committee, no meeting week for you. <laughs> All right. Next week's when I'm available. Yes. <laughs> right, right. You need a one on one. You've been gone. <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. Third. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes.